WNST, Towson of Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. Uh, we are positively into Chicken Palooza, our friends at Royal Farms. Make sure you're taking advantage of the Chicken Box Special. We got that going on all month this month as well as next month. And the Maryland Crab Cake Tour begins very, very soon, right around the corner from this guy, Mike Rosigliano, my uh, dear artist friend. You know, Pike is sort of my oldest media friend. You're sort of my second oldest media friend uh, from the News American and Sports First. But, of course, from Buffalo, the Courier Express is how you wound up in Baltimore. And this is going to be one of the most fun segments we've ever done, Rosig. I mean, for you know, like, this is all about Buffalo because, like, they're playing Major League Baseball in Buffalo. You were in Buffalo, didn't even go to the game last week. Oh, I know. I it, it broke my heart that I couldn't go to the game, but we were camping, so I couldn't I couldn't uh, get there. Well, but. Luke and I were talking for weeks leading up as to whether we should get in the car and go up there. You remember back in January, I was all set to go to the playoff game, and I found out that the New York State government was going to make me come in on Thursday to get COVID tested to stay on Monday, and I'm like. 24 hours in Buffalo. I love Buffalo, Mike Bellani. I do, but I yeah, I didn't need five days in Buffalo in January only to watch my team lose. So we thought about driving up because I have a stadium affinity. I did 30 ballparks in 30 days. Back in 15, I thought, here's a chance to see Major League Baseball in a place where no one thought they'd ever see Major League Baseball. Mike Bellani represents all things Buffalo. Uh, I guess I've known Mike uh, not as long as Rasig, but almost. It was back in the 80s. Bellani, I think you picked up the check that night before the Oilers lost to the Bills back in 1988, uh, 89. I fell in love that night in Buffalo. I think I owe you <laughs> chicken wings and pizza at the Anchor Bar and some beef on weck proper. Well, you know what, I'll, uh, Dustin, number one, it's it's great being on here with you. I want to correct you. Uh, Buffalo did have Major League Baseball. You may not have been around, but it was 105 years ago when they were a member of the uh, Federal League. And then prior to that, they are a member of the National League in um, the late 18, uh, the early 1890s for uh, three seasons. But then more importantly, in 1901, they were at the 11th hour and 59th minute to become a member of the American League. And somehow, you know, probably some corruption from Boston uh, played out. The Boston Red Sox were selected for that franchise. And oh, so really? for the next hundred and some years, Buffalo did not have a major league team. Although under the ownership when I was GM, Bob and Mindy Rich, we, we were in the, as a finalist for the expansion derby, but they picked two states, Colorado and Florida. Well, I, I remember that vividly because I've known you since before then. And when I met you, to color this whole thing, I met Rasig when I was 15. I worked at the paper. We were together. He was a Buffalo guy. We fell in as friends. We were both on the east side of town. Uh, and we was, became friends. And the Buffalo thing happened while the Colts were gone. I was an Oiler fan. Uh, and we watched football together all the time. But we went up to Buffalo. And Rasig spoke of you when we went up there. You were his friend that was trying to get Buffalo. We didn't even have Camden yards now we're talking 1987 88 we just lost the Colts and I went up to Buffalo and I remember we had a fabulous meal together at the anchor bar and I came back I fell in love with a girl from Geneseo State and I came back to a couple of I came to a couple of Bison's games that next year I, I remember Junior Noboa hitting for the cycle one day coming in for the Indianapolis Racers so I sat in that stadium so I've been in the stadium but I haven't thought about Buffalo baseball and like even when I was there to see the Bills play six times in the last 15 years. Um, I guess that dream was gone. Paint this for me because I saw you on TV. I had Todd Radom on last week who sort of invented the Buffalo Blue Jays logo last year. And I mean, we had a Baltimore Blue Jays logo for the 10 minutes the Blue Jays were going to play here. Tampa, the whole deal. I, I had Radom on last week because he actually went to, to the games last week. Then I'm watching TV. Three days ago, the morning show, my wife watches NBC Morning Show. I'm like, this is Mike Bellani. I know Bellani. My wife's like, you know everybody. And I'm like, he'll be on a show in three days. We're Sig and I'll figure this out. We'll get to the bottom of all this. How are you? I mean, like, how's Buffalo? Give me the baseball thing that this actually happened. Because if 
if I'm Mike out in the you know Chictawaga and the Bills, you know, are all I got, the Sabres and the Blue Jays show up for summer, I would go watch Vladimir Guerrero play baseball. That'd be exciting for me if I lived in Buffalo. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's sort of surreal that that here we have Major League Baseball really for the second season. But, you know, before we begin, uh, your, your guest here, uh, Mike Crisigliano, one of my dearest, dearest friends and probably one of the most creative artists uh, of all time, most phenomenal cartoonist, best thing that ever happened at Buffalo Courier Express. But on September 2nd of this year will be my 15th wedding anniversary. You know anyone who's been married 15 years who is yet to open a wedding gift from that year? <laughs> I have Mike Prisigliano's wedding gift, and it oh, is an open. There you go. Nice. Right, nice. Right, Look at right. that. After it is <laughs> the Dom Blanion, and it's a typical Resig cartoon that has taken me 15 years to read every little Don't nuance of don't drink that ever it'll kill you Rasig made one of those for me at my 10th anniversary this year's my 30th so i have one that's 20 years old sitting at the radius it's getting my, a little i year, wouldn't drink it Rasig. this year's my 40th so we all have milestones this year wow over for terry and i yeah well I, nestor and i might have to get a bottle and like Pray on it and, and send it to you. Milani, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, and like to open up this whole thing about Buffalo and, and baseball, I, Luke and I talked about coming up. Like I really did think about it. And I'm at the point in my life where like I've done a lot of things in my life and the things I haven't done anymore. I want to go chase the Northern Lights, but I really don't need to chase Major League Baseball in Louisville or Buffalo or yeah, Albuquerque or Las Vegas or any Portland. And Lord knows, once they steal the Orioles and take them to Nashville, it'll be a mess around here. But for, for me, I almost came up. Um, I had Todd on last week talking about pricing and like all of that. But the, the Major League Baseball thing for Buffalo and the fact that it's not packed and like all of that, give me a little vibe on how people there are about this because I don't know that everybody in Buffalo is really a Blue Jays fan, right? Not at all. No. Well, it, it's really, it's funny, but number one, if, if you really want to come up um, and maybe hurry. get resig, um, <laughs> we could get you up here on July 19. It's a Monday night. And you could see the uh, Boston Red Sox take on the Toronto Blue Jays. And then the next day, we'll drive to Jamestown. And you could watch a, uh, a college league game of the Jamestown Tarp Skunks. Can you put the 10,000 Maniacs back together there? If you can do oh, that, I'll, you and I'll come. How about that? Holy but, not bad. We could go to the uh, the Lucy Museum out there. <laughs> you know what I've done, Mike? I, I, there's video of this. But okay. no, the, 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 the cool thing about it, Nestor, is um, last year COVID hit, and I mean, it was, you know, uh, tragic and, and positive in a lot of ways. Positive in that there was some really good things that happened, but I would I would throw away all those good things because of the negative things and you know, the good friends that I lost because of it. So hopefully COVID is getting safely into the history books and we could, you know, just look back upon it. I certainly hope it doesn't go sideways and all the other viruses, but we're living in some pretty weird times compared to when we were back at the Courier and growing up a little bit. But So in any event, COVID hits. And you know what it did to pro sports. No one could go out. They're in bubbles, this and that. Well, the Jays, um, because of Trudeau, could not get over the border. So now they're in this big, um, um, where are we going to play? And they're looking at um, leaving um, spring training and maybe sharing a stadium. And that didn't work because of the major league restrictions on the bubble. And really, major league baseball had like about a five or six inch um, you know, binder for every team. You got to follow every, you know, um, rule they had. So long and short of it is they came to Buffalo, but they could play in front of no fans. And they built a visiting team um, clubhouse huge out in the parking lot, but they still had the bullpens um, in the foul territory. And one game, one of the uh, outfielders on a visiting team 
you know, almost um, trip and broke his leg on, on that bump. So when they had to come back here this year, that was one of the first um, things they had to do was move those bullpens out behind the fence in, uh, in uh, center field. Um, and then they said, you know, we, we need to update, upgrade these facilities. Um, and that's what they did. They put millions of dollars into the infrastructure, um, built a huge clubhouse that's, you know, better than probably what they have at the Rogers Center in Toronto. So from the amenity standpoint, um, the players love it. The thing they miss is, you know, being in their home and in Toronto, but their families are here. They're living in uh, uh, apartments right downtown overlooking the ballpark. It's really been neat, but they want to get home. And I think they're anxious. And if I were a betting man, I'd say that the July 21 game against Boston could very well be the last uh, major league game here. And um, who knows how long. Mike Bellani is our guest. Mike Rasigliano is uh, riding shotgun as well. And, uh, of course, Rasig's been uh, do doing the art around here in Baltimore, and he and Mike have been friends forever. Uh, you know, the Buffalo thing and Buffalo being tread upon and all that. Rasig, all of your friends, family, and, uh, Mike, you live there. Um, this Bills run has been something I think – they, you know, deserved for the community there. When I think of all the small places and small cities, us being one of them that have sort of been kicked around, Buffalo for football the last 15 years, it has not been good. This has been a nice little run. This is, uh, here's, here's, here's Mike and I, <laughs> Mike over here, or on the other side, uh, here. <laughs> and I at a Bills game way back when, so yeah. We That's still, a bison's jacket there, isn't it? I think absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Bison's jacket on, of course. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we still root for the Bills here. I rooted for the Bills against the Ravens last year. Sorry, Ness. But, but uh, no. We're, well, we're, you won. You, you felt better than I did when it was over. <laughs> <laughs> what loyalty is in this house, you know? Yeah, I see that Oriole hat on your head as well. Uh, one, free one, one thing I wanted to say is sure. this, this trio right here, first of all, you two are two of the great character. I, when I tell stories about people, I tell legendary stories about Nestor in Buffalo, and I tell legendary stories about Mike visiting Baltimore. And they're both amazing stories that we can't go into here. But Mike, did you ever kiss Morgana in Baltimore? Is it possible that that I? Because I did. And that's the other. Th that's the other tie we have. Is all three of us have had. A lot of contact with Morgana, the kissing band. Not a lot of contact. Come on now. I mean, yeah. I had as much contact as Ripken did. You know what I mean? You know, uh, Nestor, I got to say that um, I was, I, I'm really fortunate. I'm, I'm extremely blessed. I'm a very spiritual person. And, um, you know, as you may know, I was in a near fatal bicycle accident yeah. in 1992. And some people may look, you know, I mean, I literally, I mean, I was on death's doorstep yep. um, to the I point knew that this, the surgeon. And I, and I didn't realize it was 30 years ago. I thought it was more recent than that, but that's. Been it is. Long. It is. Wow. It'll only be 29 on September uh, 17. It'll wow. be 30 next year. So we'll have to do a big, uh, we're going to do a big celebration. And one of the things I want to do next year in 2022, which will be the 30th anniversary of it is. As a result of the accident, I was wearing a bike helmet. It's a whole series of miracles. I won't bore you with the story. You can buy the book. I'll be writing it when I'm in Puerto Rico later this year. And speaking of books, ah, we yeah. have the Seasons of Buffalo Baseball, um, <laughs> 1857 to 2020. Just go to Amazon.com. Maybe we'll get you to wear that on a T-shirt and uh, um, that book up with your chickens. Well, Mike, I, I, I would say for all of your historianness and trying to lure Major League Baseball to Buffalo low these many years ago, um, the fact that Rasig is wearing a Buffalo Blue Jays shirt, and you know, I had Radom on last week talking about logos and all of that stuff. Um, this has been a neat little thing to uh, um, a dear friend of mine, actually, who lost her husband in a biking accident in Ocean City, Jackie McCusker from Nacho Mamas. It came on the show a couple months ago and she said something that kind of hit me and I had to think about it. She called it the blessings of COVID, you know, blessings of co not that there could be any blessings in, the, in this, but the things that come out of it that are that have some grace, I guess, for for Buffalo five months of baseball, right? I mean, for you, after all these years, this is, I must've brought a tear to your eye to see a major league baseball game there, right? Um, 
it, it certainly put a huge dent in our uh, in our bank account. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, I asked Radom, why is nobody there? He's like, well, it's 50 bucks to get in. I'm like, oh. 50? Like, so- oh, man, I'd love to find a $50 ticket. The Yankees, they, they jacked the price of everything. It was funny. I, as a season ticket holder, we had the first right to betting uh, tickets. And, um, you know, I asked my wife if I could use her credit card because she's uh, an accounting person. And I'm like her sig when it comes to, uh, you know, balancing a checkbook. So at the end of the day, I was buying for friends and this and that. And you got to buy them on a phone and then transfer on a phone and then, you know, get money given back to you. At the end of the day, I had like $8,000 in tickets for the Yankee ticket for like $175 a ticket. Holy man. It was insane. And then as it got closer to the Yankee games, they jacked those price up to 225 So that's almost like $1,000 in ticket for four people to go to a game. A, a, a welcome a to the big head. leagues, Bellani. Eh? Welcome <laughs> to the big leagues. You're in the show wow. now, baby. But, you know, you're in Baltimore, <laughs> and I, I, in all my years of baseball, sports writing, everything, still to this day, my number one favorite trip was uh, meeting Rasig in Baltimore and going to Camden Yards, which was a mirror of Pilot Field when we built ours. Uh, HOK went to Baltimore and built Camden Yards. And Rasig, remember we sat in with Sid Thrift. Yeah. And then I love the dinner in Little Italy of Baltimore. Well, Memorable. That's, that's a 30-minute that's a segment by itself right there. That, well, Mike, yeah. we hope to get, like, baseball back to being relevant here for folks like you to want to come here from Buffalo to see baseball games again. I you know what? Well, it was sad. Hold on. You mentioned something earlier. You know, yeah, the O's aren't doing very well at all, and that's probably an understatement. And I heard the game last night. The broadcasters were saying that it was about 140 degrees there. Um, the That threat of uh, Nashville is a lot like when the Bills were in that period where, you know, Ralph Wilson, if they didn't sell enough tickets, they'd go to L.A., they'd go here. You know, I feel for you guys if those threats are around because there are cities – that are that want Major League Baseball, and one that I won't um, that you better put higher at the list is probably Las Vegas. Well, I, I report on this every day, right? And and obviously, you not getting a team, and Denver getting a team, Miami and Tampa and Arizona. Um, I remember those expansion drafts. I've been on the radio 30 years doing this. Uh, Major League Baseball has not been one to want to move teams around, right? I mean, the Giants and the White Sox were going to go to St. Petersburg. That sort of never happened. Um, I, I Oakland's still in Oakland, you know, against all odds. But they left Montreal. And when they left Montreal and they put the team here, it's changed everything here. I'm going to a Nationals game next week, right? So I live 38 miles. I live right here. This is where I live. It's for sale. Please buy it. Million-dollar view at half the price. Um and I'm going out to see the Padres play because my buddy Freddie Yolman still runs the Padres after all these years. And, um, and Machado's in, and I have a Tony Gwynn jersey in my closet, so I'm going to go do that. Do, do you, as a Buffalonian, often go to Blue Jay? I mean, as a baseball fan in Western New York, how often do people peace bridge it, passport it, do whatever you do, and go into Toronto and say, I want to see the Jays? Even when they were good a couple of years ago and it was – it was happening again. When I've been in Toronto the last 20 years, people in Toronto don't want to go to Toronto Blue Jays games. You know, I've been there when it's been very, very lonely. And I go back to Robbie Alomar and Jimmy Key and like all of that back in the 90s when it was 4 million people there, 4 million people here. Um, but from, from the Buffalo perspective, they're trying to grow their brand, right? Like they want you driving over there now, even though they scalped the hell out of here in the last eight weeks. Uh, well, you know, it, it's funny. Early on, this is a Yankee town. And, you know, I I think Harry Smith, who you referred to earlier on the Today Show, um, I think they wanted to come here for the Yankees um, Jays series. But the Jays pushed him to when Baltimore was here, saying that when Baltimore arrived, they would have been able to sell the whole stadium. I think quietly, I don't think the Jays PR people wanted NBC here to see um, the the eight or nine thousand people that were here cheering and wearing only Yankee stuff. It was unbelievable. It was a Yankee home game? Oh, my God. It was 90% Yankee fans at the Yankee Jays game. And early on, when we were affiliated with all these different teams, we tried like heck to bring the Yankees here many, many times. 
um, when they finally hooked up with the Jays, they're the natural for here. No pun intended. Um, Why because, were they ever in Columbus and Syracuse like, to begin with? They were the Yankees. They could have been anywhere they wanted to be, right? Yep. Uh, they were never in Syracuse. They were only in Columbus. Um, and then they went to uh, Scranton. But now was it Jays, Ty, no, I, Tidewater was the Mets, right? Yeah. Like, where were the Yankees in the 70s? Columbus. Colo- always. Okay. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm confused. George Syracuse Steinbrenner was the Jays. Had, right? had, okay. George had some shipping um, um, things going on over there in Ohio. But the relationship now with, with Toronto and Buffalo is probably one of the best AAA Major League Baseball affiliations um, in baseball. And the fact that Mark Shapiro, who I think is one of the more brilliant front office executives, the president of the Jays is in charge, he's using the same model he used when we are the AAA affiliate of the Cleveland Indians, and he was their farm director moving up there. Um, We had, that was the last time Buffalo had a championship team. He built it from within, and then the Indians were so good, you know, back then. That was, ironically, the year of my accident. Um, He's doing the same thing now. I would predict that that trade they just did with Milwaukee is just only the beginning. Um, I think you're going to see them do whatever they can to fill in that uh, beleaguered uh, bullpen. They're only four games out of a wild card spot and they got Boston coming in here for three. And then later on the next month, they have Boston. So you never, that's why they play the game. You never know what's going to happen, but uh, I like the relationship. There are people from here that go there. There's a cross promotion between both clubs, but I'll tell you, there's more fans from Canada and Toronto that come down to Buffalo for the bills games. Mike Bellani is our guest and Mike Rasigliano. Who goes Rasig? Well, I wanted to say about the Jays, you know, like I I think this is what we're hoping for as Oriole fans here is to see something like the Jays have, right? They have this incredible nucleus of young talent, three major league stars, I guess, that were sons of stars in baseball. I recognize all of them when they're standing my hands. Look at that. And uh, Bichette and Dante Bichette's son, all on Toronto and, you know, uh, we're hoping in a couple of years in Baltimore, we have this same kind of great young nucleus that they've been trying to build here. We'll yeah, Mike, say- everybody's been going down to uh, to Bowie to see Adley Rutschman and see Grayson Rodriguez during this period of time. Um, and, and for me, baseball's been harder to watch because of the strikeouts, the home runs. Uh, the, the, you know, the, there's no action. There's no, the, you know, Louis Aparicio couldn't steal bases because they don't steal bases anymore. There's no hit and run because they don't hit and run anymore. So the... The, the MITification of baseball has made it a little tougher to just sit and watch a game, I think, and especially when your team's in the last place. Uh, Mike Bellani's here. We're talking Buffalo baseball. We're talking Buffalo football. We're talking Buffalo sports history in Toronto. And uh, it's a little Baltimore history. We put more Dan in. Uh, Mike, I can't believe behind your shoulder I see the San Diego chicken. You got Ted Giannolis on the wall. Where's Rasig? Uh, I have Rasig in my basement, uh, my, my basement museum with a famous uh, cartoon that he did of, uh, uh, I think, the last year at War Memorial Stadium. Here again, it takes you hours just to look at it. And even when you're done, you still see more things that you can't imagine one person could put in a cartoon. Were you at the Rock Pile when they shot the Robert Redford there that night, Bellani? Were you in the the crowd that night or no? I was uh, very close with that whole crew. But I've got a receipt right here on the inside, oh, from the inside that. back cover of the seasons of Buffalo baseball. You can get <laughs> it at Amazon.com. That is a great book, by the way, Nestor. I'm telling Makes you, a perfect August book. 1st gift for any <laughs> baseball fan in your life. There you go. Mike, I owe you wings and I owe you pizza and I probably owe you beer or anything you imbibe these days. Uh, if you do get down here for a ball game, by all means, uh, it can even be a Buffalo Bills game. So, you know, I mean, we do we, we expect to play the Bills in January somewhere. We just hope it's not there this year. You know what, Rasig, why don't you look at your calendar for uh, uh, my wife has to go to Puerto Rico for 10 days starting August 21. Um, maybe that... Uh, August 27, 28 uh, weekend, um, if the if the O's are home, I'd uh, 
It could take a little roll. So, so here's to, the deal. Uh, I, I, I happen to be doing a Maryland crab cake tour in August. I'm doing 30 crab cakes in 30 days in the state of Maryland. And uh, by the end of the month. Where are you going to be that time? Well, at the end of the month, I'm going to be fly fishing with Dan Rodericks out on the Savage River and glamping in a yurt. Uh, I didn't even know what a yurt was, but I'm going to sleep in one now. I will say this. Um, the, the great Joe Madden is bringing the great Shohei Otani and Mike Trout to Baltimore on Tuesday the 24th, Wednesday the 25th, and Thursday the 26th. I could make Tuesday the 24th happen. All right, so that's that's my availability in this is Tuesday the 24th. I don't know if Otani's pitching. Mike, I was in New York last week. I, I scored Springsteen tickets on Thursday night. My wife and I were oh, up on Wednesday. Oh, my man. So, so we go up on Wednesday, and Otani's pitching in the Bronx – against the Yankees right and we walked 15 miles to the city we never got in the subway it was 100 degrees it was literally the 100 degree day and at six o'clock we decided nah we're not going to go down to 34th street and get any exp- we're not doing it it's too hot we're not going to go and I'm like man I'm going to regret not seeing Otani pitch in the Bronx we're sitting wow. in this Asian restaurant I got my hair back like Seagal I got my chopsticks out my wife's like Check the app and see how that kid's doing. I look on the phone. It was the first inning, and he had given up seven runs. And I'm That's like, we made a really good call doing a, a Sapporo yeah. and some some Asian wings here instead of going to the – so I, I'm going to see him. I just – I'm convinced that wasn't meant to be. Like, right. you weren't meant to die in that bike accident. I was not meant to see Shohei Otani pitch in the Bronx last week. <laughs> Neither was anybody else, apparently, because he was out of the game in the first inning. So I still have a one-in-five shot of seeing Otani pitch – so I want to hold the 24th open. So Joe Madden's in town, right? I mean. I love the on. Cubs. Well, yeah, there you go. He's made a date. I want to see Otani, too. He's amazing. It's going to cost me a fortune in crab cakes. I'm taking you to Fadley's, all right? All right. Hey, you know what? Uh, do me a favor. Email me the details of that. I'll look into the uh, I'll look into the flights to come down there. That'd be fun. You want me to so email a guy little... that's only got a flip phone? <laughs> <laughs> I have the ro- I have the rotor phone. <laughs> I I will get the pigeons out the window here, and they will arrive up there in Amherst very very soon. Um, you I go. appreciate you spending a night at a ball game with you, especially with the uh, the greatest baseball player on earth right now. Right, would be an interesting way to spend the Tuesday night. What about very, Vlad very Jr. Where do you put? Wait a minute, where do you put Vlad Jr. I mean, that's the that's the MVP race, right? Vlad and Otani. That's the MVP race in the American League. Those I'm seeing guys. Vlad play. I'm seeing the Buffalo slash Toronto Blue Jays play on the 17th of August at Nats Park with Tom Perez, who's running for governor. So that I'm putting amazing. together. We're having we're having a Jimmy's crab cake, Baltimore crab cake for you. Hey, we're seeing, I'm bringing uh, Brandon Scott, our mayor, over to Coco's later on in the month. So hold the twist, Man. maybe. All right. All right. Hold the Thanks, the mayor. I'm in. All right, like, I'm going to eat my peach cake. I, I, I heated my peach cake up, and this is a free <laughs> plug. I, um, because, Rasid, you live amongst the best bakeries in Baltimore. Have you ever had peach cake like this? Uh, I had peach cake that looked like that. I don't know if it's as good as that. But no, I, no, no. You, so you would need you need to go up Harford Road to Fenwick Bakery. Oh, okay, Fenwick, this is Fenwick. I know Fenwick, of course. This is a Fenwick, but I don't sleep on the Woodley, okay? Because that's right around the corner from you two. Yeah, uh, I, I want to give some local love to some local bakers because somebody gets up earlier in the morning than even I do to make this so effing delicious and i i just want to give him some love that's all because it's back it's only back for six weeks it's like cicadas or buffalo blue jays you got about six or eight weeks to you know. hey, Nestor, <laughs> Nestor, I'll, I'll i'm gonna look at that 24th and and get down there um you know I'll, will I'll, you be my celebrity that day for a crab cake because i invited joe madden and he turned me down absolutely but i'll do this on the reverse i'll get you um um when we get off Send, I think you sent it to, I don't know, I, I need help here, but send me your email or something, and uh, I will send you the link for, we got to bring you here for a wing fest, and that's Labor Day weekend, and uh, my buddy Drew Serza um, runs literally a wing fest. It used to be at the downtown ballpark, but because of the Jays and the uncertainty, he now is doing it at uh, the former uh, Rich Stadium, which is now Highmark Stadium. And it's the weekend before the Bills open their season. And it's literally wing 
um, restaurants from I all swore over the I would uh, only country. come to Buffalo for, you know, one of two things. And, and, and the disco thing was the, was the thing I always wanted to do. Is the, they still do the disco party? Yeah, the day after uh, Thanksgiving. Ah. Rasig, you've always wanted to do that one, haven't you? Uh, my wife would be fantastic at it, of course. She's a great dancer. But me, yeah, I'd be on the sidelines. Is it still a big thing, Mike? I mean, there's still thousands of people doing oh, the yeah. disco thing? Oh, yeah, huge. Yeah, they ha obviously haven't had it, you know, in a couple of years because of COVID. But I think if everything continues to open up, it'll be, you know, bigger than ever. I love you people in Buffalo. I mean, you have a, you had a great record store up there on the north side of town. I was going to tell you the beginning of this because you were breaking my balls about Buffalo and selling your book and all that. I did a whole travelogue back in the beginning of YouTube at 08, 09. We came up there. We lost some Kyle Bowler game. It was terrible. We got our ass kicked nine to six or something. Um, and and I, I came up there. There was a place in North Tonawanda called Nestor's. Nestor's Red Hot. It was a it was a hot dog ice cream storefront, right? And it's out of business now. I went up there. I have a hat, and I went up there. And it turns out North Tonawanda had some great beef on Weck. It is the carousel capital of the world. And yeah. I went to the carousel museum. So I mean, I've done some really. I haven't seen the world's biggest ball of twine in Jamestown or anything like that. But I have had wings in in Depew, if that you know what I mean. So I try to get around a little bit. I found Jaworski sent me to his favorite. Favorite Polish place in um, uh, Lackawanna. La correct, correct. So I've done the Buffalo tourism thing. I mean, I've tried at least. And there's a carousel in downtown Buffalo now, Nestor. There was a museum, but now there's a carousel, and I rode it on this last trip. It's great. It's just brand new downtown. All right. Yep, well, it's I right down at the waterfront. You know that Nestor's Texas Red Hots on Webster Street is now uh, known as a Louis Texas Red Hot. Ah, what Nestor a, what sold a out to Louis. What a mistake. Louis always gets me. Look, I got my passport. I can get across the Peace Bridge whenever uh, uh, Trudeau decides to let me in. So uh, I've got this here, and I, I got my shots. So I'm ready to go. Mike, I hope to see you in August, my friend, and I appreciate the kind invitation for wings and indigestion in Buffalo the first weekend of uh, September. Uh, All right, man. Hey, thank you. Thing. And there is there's Louis, if you can see him who bought out nesters in North Tonawana. <laughs> I want to say one thing before I go, and it's great being with you guys. I love the Blue Jays now. I love their young talent. But Cito still sucks. Cito sucks. <laughs> Cito sucks. And Mark Messina and Mike Messina will tell you. I'll tell you, too. Right. I'll find the shirt in Mothball somewhere. Mike Bellani, legend in Buffalo. Uh, and, and Mike Rosigliano, legend in Gardenville, joining us here today. Uh, and, of course, some friendships, some fun, all of it brought to you by our friends at Coal Roofing and Gordian Energy. Drinking my Rofo coffee in this mug here. I had Bill on earlier this week. We were talking about uh, life after the pandemic. You can find all that out at Baltimore Positive. We are with Anne Arundel County Executive Stuart Pittman at G&M. Having some crab cakes, starting the Maryland Crab Cake Tour uh, later on this week. Barry Glassman, Harford County Executive, joining us last week up at Barrett's. God, that crab cake was delicious at Barrett's on the Pike. Uh, and uh, uh, Brandon Scott, two weeks from now at Coco's and John. Johnny O will be joining us at Costas, and then the tour begins in earnest. August 1st in Ocean City, Maryland. You guys never stop. It's amazing to me. <laughs> I am Nestor. We never and stop I'm, talking. I'm Mike Galani in Buffalo, brought to you by the Seasons of Buffalo Baseball Book, <laughs> available on Amazon. I've lost control. We're Baltimore positive. Uh